I'm waiting for the actual uh, Reaper stream to pick it up. There it goes. Okay. Then we are basically ready once I think we I assume there's gonna be people in chat. I All right, well, uh, there we go. All right, perfect. You're good to go. Hey, everybody, this is Anne for Reaper Miniatures. Welcome to the Reaper Toolbox Pro Tips Edition, Home Edition. <laughs> As you can see, I am at home today. Um, on Mondays, we're gonna still be testing our, uh, our remote stream, essentially, um, to make sure that we can iron out all the bugs as things are in the works now to uh, send equipment and stuff to certain painters. So we wanna make sure that stuff is indeed working and that we don't get any like camera hiccups or weirdness. Uh, so yeah, and we're still fine tuning some stuff too. So that is why we're doing stream from home today. Welcome to Anne's home. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm going to say good morning. Yes, John, you were in the chat room first. You were stalking us. I know you were. Uh, we got Quindy. Hey, and I'm groaning and Robin and Margaret and, and I'm not even going to say your name. t what? <laughs> I don't believe that you are that. <laughs> Numbat. And yeah. Oh, well, yeah, then somebody has to open it. Yeah, somebody has to reflect the schedule. Yeah, because it's Mondays from here on out, pretty much, as we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <gasps> Programming. Programming. Amazing, right? So, as usual, my disclaimer when I am at home is there may be a dog emergency at any time <laughs> wherein the dog needs to be rushed outside. Um, and so uh, if you see the uh, we'll be right back screen pop up, I really need to put Kiri's face on there uh, just to reflect it. Uh, but yeah, so if you see the be right back screen, that means there's been a dog emergency. Um, otherwise, this should be hey there, everybody. Hey, Planer. Hey, Dammit Daniel. Hey, Motor City Ray. It's good to see you. Hey, Jedi, Jared. And everybody, yeah, awesome. So we're gonna be painting black today. It's gonna be kind of a weird black day too because I'm gonna highlight it with different colors because you don't always have to highlight black with the same thing. Uh, hey, Everlina, it's good to see you. And Mono Monohos and everybody. Yes, I'm at home, Toko, or Toko. I, I uh, refreshed the screen stream schedule and it oh, good. should reflect. I mean, it, it was on there before, just sometimes it, just excludes times. For oh, something. and I went to the it's, wrong it's face not, cam too. Yeah, I've also got to reorganize my uh, my thing because I went to the wrong uh, the wrong face cam. It turns out uh, I, I didn't go to my Reaper toolbox face cam. Sad me. Um, so yeah, still ironing out the bugs, everybody. Because <laughs> I have two face cams. I have my normal painting big one, and I have the toolbox one that has the toolbox logo. And guess what isn't up on my screen right now? The toolbox logo. So sorry, Reaper. I'll change. Um, but I'm not going to change it now because it'll play the intro for you again. Uh, so, although actually I should, I should, because, uh, let's see, painting big. Well, it should be, it should be. Did I just forget to put it? I don't know anymore. Or did I just, you know what I did? Boing! It's magical. Amazing. I am not a technical person, guys. <laughs> There's your blooper for the day. Anne forgets to reactivate the toolbox logo and you all get to see it. It's a magic. All right. Yes, greetings everybody. Hi, John, John, uh, Paul John's life. Hi, everybody. All right, so I'm going to actually go to minicam because otherwise I'm just going to sit here and make more bloopers for y'all. And although that is entertaining, we would like to get some painting done. Hey, Shooter. Um, we would like to get some painting done today. Hey, Jay. Awesome. So, all right, let us go to minicam. Boo doo doo, it's magic. Ta da! And now I have the correct logo. Sweet! All right, yes, technology is magic, Robin. And I, I, it's a good thing I'm not a wizard, like in a fantasy world, because can you imagine? Can you imagine the things that I would do? Like, there would be like pink huffle lumps and crazy magical mutations, and I would probably have donkey ears or something, like seriously. Um, so, yeah, hey, Maharoon, good to see you. 
All right, so this is our uh, our subject today is uh, Drago, assassin. Um, he is uh, pretty uh, pretty darn evil looking, especially because his eyes are really just holes in his head. But that actually adds to the spooky assassin thing. Uh, so I actually think he's pretty cool and menacing for an assassin model to hit your PCs with. Um, and his armor is really cool. You could actually I'm going to be painting it more as black leather. Um, and then he's got some cloth on his hood. So we're mostly going to be concentrating on the cloth and on the uh, black leather bits here. And I'm gonna show you guys um, some stuff because your black doesn't always have to be boring and black is what we're coming down to. Um, ah, yes, this is my, at home, like I forget my Reaper uh, um, polo shirts usually at work on purpose so that I have them there. Um, but that means that it's the Reaper Con shirts for home when I do home streams. So we're casual, it's casual Monday. <laughs> And let's face it, don't we really all need to be more casual on Monday anyway? Like, don't we need the casualness on Monday more than we need it on Friday? I don't know. Um, maybe casual Friday is kind of weird. Maybe it's mistimed. Uh, so yeah, so let's jump in. I'm going to see, I may have thinned my black a little bit too much here. And if so, I'm going to have to load more pigment into it. But I do base coat everything with black. And I am using straight up uh, pure black, 9037. So, yeah, it is actually, this This is the, the power of washing your miniatures. I'm using quite a thin base coat, but it is sticking. Um, I'll say that, and then it won't stick to an area watch. Do, 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 do. So, you don't have to even base coat black with pure black, by the way. Um, you can use just a really dark color. This is why we make things like the shadow red and shadow violet and uh, black green. Um, because you can use just a really dark color as black, as long as everything else on the model is lighter. So if there are only gonna be some areas on your model that are dark, you can easily base coat with a really dark blue uh, or a really dark green or a really dark um, red, any of those, or brown. And especially if you shade it with black, it's gonna read as black if you have no actual black on the rest of your model. If you do have actual black on the rest of your model, then obviously the pure black is going to be the overwhelming, this is black. And the other things that are close to black, but not quite actually black, are not gonna look like they're black. Um, often with, uh, with just pure black, I will base coat in blue liner is a great example of this. I've actually done models that are, um, in black, quote unquote, but I used brown liner and blue liner as their base uh, base colors. Um, so they actually aren't, there is no pure black anywhere on them, but they, it still reads as black because the liner colors are so dark, except for sepia, that uh, you can easily use them as black replacements if there's no other black on the model. Uh, yeah, walnut brown. Uh, yeah, it is, Shooter. Walnut is absolutely supposed to be that dark. It's been a, walnut brown has been a staple of Reaper's paint line since, uh, gosh, since the old, old pro paints when I first came into the company. And I kept it for a very good reason in that of all of Reaper's early paints, walnut was the color that most of my friends liked and used because it was so dark. And what that enabled it to do is be a great lining color because not only was it matte and near black, but it wasn't pure black. So you didn't get that cartoony look and it had great coverage. So it was a great liner color because even if you thinned it, you could get a nice solid line. So walnut is absolutely intended to be that dark. You know, Pendrake, if you're watching Happy Little Skies, I have to say that you didn't probably miss anything over here. You mostly missed me making a blooper and disclaimers about how it's a home show today. Uh, and so Anne is full of uh, trying to iron out the bugs still. In reality, if I did these more often, I probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't bloop as much. And I am using a really thin base coat on this. I wash my minis with a bit of dish soap. I just used Dawn. Um, or a olive or whatever I'm using. Um, just a little tiny bit of dish soap and a big uh, plastic mixing bowl with hot, really hot water in it. Um, and uh, swoosh them around and then wash them off and let them dry overnight. And as a result, I can use thin base coats on bones. Um, so I am, you can even see this is even like a, a, almost like a wash. You can see through it, so. Thanks for the uh, sub in Fontana. Ooh, yay, yay subs, yay. Remember, a sub is a vote for this show. Even though we haven't uh, haven't managed to power up to giveaways on this show yet, a, a sub for this show is a vote that you like this show. So, and it does, uh, forgive me uh, if I'm wrong here, Justin, but it does count toward our huge subtotal, right, for the big giveaway? 
Uh, absolutely. So yeah. we're currently actually idling at 1468, so we didn't oh. drop off too many. Um, but that means that... We're so close. Me, correct. Well, we did one Friday, and then Dave came to me after the show and said, hey, you know what? Since people came together and they, they pushed to make this happen, uh, we'll do another one this Friday if we're still above our threshold. Ooh. So that means we'll do another really big mini giveaway, um, and that'll be Friday. This coming Friday, and, yeah, and, and we need less than forty subs, like only thirty-two subs, right, to to get there again. So uh, by Friday, by Friday, we need to make sure everybody who drops off uh, renews, and uh, anybody who hasn't subbed yet, consider subbing because we do give away a gigantic package of minis. All right, so then putting a second coat. I want the hood to be black. Um, let's put a second coat of a darker color on one of these other ones, especially okay. when you're. Hmm? Do you have your earbuds in by chance? Oh, I do not. You are coming through. Oh, no. That explains it. Hold on. Um, earbuds, 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 um, earbuds. There they are. Ha-ha. Another blooper for y'all. Yay. No, he's, just, he's not down the well. It's just me, my fault, coming out of the computer. Let me fix it. Here's my, my thingies. Here's my headphones. Whoa, Motor City Ray. Wow, now I can hear you and you're really loud, Justin. Yeah, if you need to turn me down. You... If I need to turn you down, I can? Yeah, through the stream at least. Oh, through the stream. Uh, would it be desktop? Uh, Yes, but alter it. If you want to do both, alter it in your tray. Oh, okay, yeah, I can alter it in my tray. Hold on. Tray makes more sense. Sorry, guys, these are still tests. All right, talk for me, Justin. Hello. Talk for me again. Hello. Okay, we'll try that. So you're not blowing out my ears. I mean, I'm sure that, like, some people who think you have a sexy voice would be a-okay with you blowing out their ears, but yeah. Well, I, I don't know if they want me yelling in their ears. Also, Motor City Ray just dropped a 20... Oh my god, Motor City Ray, you are crazy. I missed that because I was busy bloopering. <laughs> he dropped it under the camouflage of my bloopers. <laughs> so yeah, Justin, we need to remember to remind me on Mondays. I need to, actually, you know what? I'm just going to write myself a note. Because if I put a big note on my monitor, I will uh, remember. Tray volume... Actually, at this point, Taz, since the it seems to have worked this way, uh, we did it on Friday because of all the matched subs that got us to the goal. So we've only done this giveaway like once other time, one other time. So if it comes down to it, uh, one of the two shows that we could give it away on would be Reaper Live or Reaper Land. But it's really dependent on when we hit the goal. Because I also want to offer it to the people that are in chat and ready to go. If we ever do another um, big paint giveaway, that one there. will probably have a that one will probably have a uh, uh, I guess a longer intro. Like we'll let more people get in chat before you push the button. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. And we should build it up as to when we're doing it, or no? Like, do you just wait for random people to come in, or do you give it away? Like, do we have any build up when we when we're gonna do one of those? Or do we just uh, do it by surprise? Are you talking about the... Uh, the big ones. The big giveaway? Yeah. Uh, the paint one, we haven't set a goal for the paint one. Uh, but I assume it would have to be beyond 1,500. So if, since 1,500 is the the the, the 150 minis... To, well, it's actually like 160-something. But uh, that's kind of the, the mid-tier giveaway, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Let me see. Let's do some... Uh, right now, Ray, we're 11 short, technically, of 1,500, but you have until Friday. Yeah. So, and yeah, don't bust it out now. Bust sub, it out Friday, yeah. Because if you bust it out Friday, we'll match it. Yeah, whereas now we might have people, um, we might temporarily match it, but we might have people fall off. So so hold hold your sub bomb. Toss it around. Juggle it for a little bit longer, probably. And who knows? Maybe we'll make it without sub bombs. You know, Maybe we'll just naturally exceed. All right, so that is very possible. 
example here, by the way. So obviously, since I already have pure black on the mini, um, these things are looking a lot lighter. Uh, I mixed these colors to be good highlights for black. So if I was going to do this color, really, um, I'd need to lower it down more toward black to where it started to read more like black as a base coat. And the nice thing about doing an off black to start with, and by the way, carbon gray is good for this as well if you're looking for a neutral black. Um, but the good thing about this is that you can still shade with actual pure black. So it, it kind of lets you, instead of just highlighting to get your black, it lets you lay down a base color and then shade and highlight if that's your painting style. So you don't have to change your style when you're painting black at that point. So let's let this dry a bit. I think I'm going to do his hood to kind of demonstrate um, kind of how I highlight black normally. And uh, the key with black, well, let me see. I got to check... Uh, Check the boxes, make sure everybody... Pro tips on a Monday. Yeah, Coovs, um, Monday pro tips are from my house. We're still testing the remote streaming. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Just kind of looking at stuff. Make sure I don't miss any questions. Oh, I'm glad you had a birthday stream. Good birthday stream, Motor Steve Ray. Awesome. Uh, oh yeah, I would prime anything else made night Gumby. Bones has always been weird. Once we figured out that it, that it, the paint would bond to it, um, without primer, uh, then that it was a weird thing, right? So then it became a promotional thing, but nothing else is that way. Um, if you're working with plastic, if you're working with uh, resin, if you're working with metal, prime all of those. You cannot do anything. The reason the dish soap, um, works with bones is it actually the the paint will will uh stick just fine to prone bones without the dish soap prep but if you want to use a thinner base coat then i think the dish soap prep is absolutely necessary at least in my experience because if i try to use a thin base coat like this over uh, regular bones without washing the mini it will not stick it'll beat up so i think whatever like residual machine oils or mold release is on the bones and it varies from model to model um the dish soap uh successfully deals with that so I'm bringing my black in a little bit here because my, my highlights got very large. Now, the thing with black is that you really have to watch the size of your highlights because if you kind of remember my regular thing on surface control is uh, that in order for a color, a surface to look a particular color, at least 50% of that surface must be that color. So, ah, I'm just going to throw things on the floor because that's the way I roll. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you find you can prime bones and you don't have any advers adverse effects, feel free. Um, my mileage varies with Zenith a lot of the times, and I'm, I've been playing a lot with Zenith all lately just to see, uh, if I can find a sweet spot with it for my painting style. Um, but, uh, but you know, do what works for you. I mean, that's always the, the thing. It's just like, but don't, don't expect to be able to get away with not priming any surface other than bones. Uh, thanks for the, uh, Twitch prime shooter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Balrog, how's it going? All right. So, so the thing about this then, if you think about it, if 50% of the surface has to remain black for it to look black, and then you have to stop and say, oh yeah, but wait, normally with that rule, you also are adding in like 50% shadows and what's the shadow, or uh, sorry, 25% shadows. So normally when I, when I do this, it's 25% shadows, 25% highlights and 50% the midtone color that I want the mini to look. Um, but with black, your shadows are also black. So if you think about it, that means that for a surface to really look black, 75% of that surface has to stay black. So I'm good, Balrog, actually. I'm pretty awesome. I started a new diet over the weekend, and I'm, like, super, like, energetic and hyper. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that means we really have to minimize the amount of uh, highlights that we do, or if we're gonna do like 50% of the surface highlights, like I've started with this blue gray, um, that means that I need to keep the initial highlight quite dark so that it's near black and only bring up the, the really noticeable highlights very narrowly. So, do, do, do. all right, so there we go, there we go, there we go. So I've got highlights on him, you can see them. Um, just kind of like following the folds here, picking up the top of the folds here and a little bit 
on this little bulge here because if you look at the front of his face, that little bulge um, below wrong his jawline sticks out and we catch the light. So, all right, so we're keeping this first highlight. By the way, I'm using uh, a mixture of about, I wanna say about six drops of pure black and two of tropical blue. And it does not matter what red, blue, or green you use for this, as long as your first layer has um, black mixed into it. Just kind of mess around with blues and see. I like, I almost grabbed uh, oceanic, but then I realized that the white that's in tropical would make a nice blue gray because the white plus black will give it a gray tone. And I like using blue grays to uh, highlight black. We're painting black, Silverthorn. And we're painting black with all sorts of different colors. So uh, essentially back here, I use this blue gray as my base tone, my base coat. Uh, and then I used also a red version as a base coat. And I have a dark green over here too, although it went a little bit very green because I used dragon green. So I don't know if we'll do that one, maybe. Um, but yeah, so when we continue our highlights, if you're gonna be mixing like this, and this is what I really like to do, you can see my colors up there, by the way. See all those? Um, so then I'll just carry, and I'll bring my palette in just for a bit here, even though it's gonna make the white balance a little wonky. So I'm gonna bring, you know, a couple of brushfuls over there and I'm gonna drop a drop of white or an off-white. It doesn't really matter what white you use at this time. Um, I'll just do pure white because pure white. There. And we'll see if it's gone too light. Uh, maybe, yeah, it might have gone, that really hit it hard. We'll mix in a little bit more of our dark color and we'll thin it down. So one thing to remember when you're highlighting, especially when you're highlighting by adding pure white is that you must add more water. Um, if you're layering to get it translucent. If you're wet blending, it doesn't matter. But once you add pure white, because pure white wants to cover more than anything, pure white wants to cover. So in order to make it blend nicely and not have as high coverage, you need to add a lot of water. So the minute you start highlighting, I didn't really have to add much water to this at all. It gets maybe, actually it's about a three to one. I didn't even change it between my base coat and using it for a highlight. And part of that is that these two colors are very similar. You can see how close they are, right? You can just see a little bit of blue and it's a little bit lighter here. But when you jump to something that's this different, you either need to mix a 50-50 mixture of these colors first, or you need to thin this one a lot. And it's your choice. You can use thicker paint for highlighting if it's really thin. Or if you want to use, or sorry, if it, you can use thicker paint for highlighting if it's very close in color to your original color. But the minute you start getting very different is when you start having to change it up. So if you're using thicker paint and you really don't want to thin, do kind of a halfway, halfway. One brush full of one, one brush full of the other. And then you can use thicker paint to highlight. And you, your brush strokes should be minimized because, and I love, I love bones, right? I can totally bend this sword out of the way so you guys can see this better. Um, so I'm going to push that back so we get our normal white balance back. And my highlights are gonna be very small because if I make them big, this uh, cloth is gonna look blue gray. Pure weight wants to give me a headache. It is. Yeah, I know I could have put on some music, right? But uh, so, although my kind of music in the morning would probably put everybody to sleep. I actually like um, like ambient and uh, like Enya and uh, Stuff that's really, really more sleepy music, but it's low key. And I kind of like that in the morning for some reason. It used to drive people crazy in the old paint department when I first started at Reaper because I was listening to sleepy music too early in the morning. But it's chill and I like a chill morning. All right, so I'm putting on highlights, but just a tiny bit. And I'm only, um, I'm leaving a bit of my previous highlight layer. Mostly I want to hit this down near the bottom of this uh, bulge here, maybe around the edge. A little bit on top of the head and just a couple touches there. So you can see how that's coming up. So see how it still looks black, right? In general, 75% of my surface, or at least 60% is black still. Um, and a lot of it is that really dark blue that I started with up here. So because of that, the whole surface is reading as black. So as we continue, you can highlight black up to pure white and you should if you're doing shiny black, if you're doing patent leather or any shiny black leather, uh, it's almost imperative that you highlight it close to or up to white because the minute a surface is shiny, just like we talked about with NMM, you need that white highlight or very close to it in order to convey the fact that it is shiny. Otherwise the eye is not gonna read it as shiny and you'll have failed a little bit in your task of recreating a, uh, a surface. 
So let's go to this one now. Now I'm really gonna be tiny with my highlights. Like I'm really gonna punch just a little bit of areas where I think that the highlight is gonna go and in the center of my previous highlight and just along the edge down here. So yeah, on cloth, I won't take it up to pure white. Or, or if I do, I need to ask, okay, is it like oil cloth? Is this, is the cloak that he's wearing or the hood that he's wearing like water impermeable? So it would be waxed, like in a waxed coat does have a sheen to it, in which case I can go up a little higher. But most cloth is pretty dull. So you want to be careful how high you go on cloth. And this is part of making things look different, right? So I could paint him with black armor and black cloth and black leather and I could make it all look different just by the way I highlighted it, right? So that's something to think about and keep in mind when you feel like painting a black model. Um, if you if you want a lot of things dark, but you're afraid it's gonna look boring, you're gonna have hard um, a hard time differentiating between areas, remember that the way you highlight and the colors that you use um, can vary. Like if I was doing something shiny, the other thing I would do would be to put a lot more blue in it because then you've got a, a kind of an implied sky reflection when you're taking up your highlights, even more blue than this blue gray. So that's another thing to think about. And on cloth, often I, although I'm using blue gray for this one, on cloth, often I do not use blue for that reason. I don't want a strong sky reflection. Um, I want a warm color usually because uh, sunlight falling on black cloth will create kind of a brownish look more than anything. This is more like a cloudy day uh, is what I've done here. So if you want to like up your painting without even upping your technique, start thinking about things like that. Start thinking about naturalizing your painting and trying that. Or if you're painting like steampunk or, or um, like cyberpunk far future, think about like neon, you know, lighting or, you know, different colored lighting, even fantasy. You know, a lot of people like to do firelight or candlelight. Just thinking about how surfaces look under different types of lighting. And I mean, you could just look at that in real life. That's something that you don't need to go very far to figure out. Um, so yeah, so there's that I'm going to do. I like, um, I like peppy music at certain points of the day, Balrog. I, um, I have an eighties, eighties music mix and that's always pep up peppy and cheerful. So I like that. Um, sometimes like my productive time is really like late morning, early afternoon. Uh, in fact, so we're right in the middle of it right here. Um, so sometimes I'll go for, uh, for really upbeat and uh, happy music. I tend to listen uh, to upbeat music on my way to work because it gets me hyped for the day. But since I'm, I'm working from home this morning, uh, I'll have to wait on that. But yeah, and then definitely chill music in the evenings. Otherwise I'll get all hyper again. <laughs> music really affects my mood. So I, I kind of use it strategically. What about you guys? Does music really, really affect your mood? Or do you, does it not matter? Can you listen to metal right before bed? <laughs> Let's see here, what do I do here? Hmm, what's my lighting? Pardon me while I go and look at my lighting here. See how the light falls on this sucker. All right, I see where my highlights are. So again, once again, all you need to do is have an overhead lamp to kind of figure out where your highlights should go. I just looked at this guy and saw that the light really goes, glances kind of in a line down on either side. If I hold the light right above him, on either side of these two plates is where his highest highlights are. And then he's kind of got a diffused highlight toward the middle. So I'm going to catch that. And this again is with my mix of about, it's about, I want to say eight drops of tropical blue, 9419, and two drops of pure black. This is actually a really nice color to highlight black with. I'm actually enjoying it. So um, yeah, really, really, really shiny. Uh, like that's like black chrome racks. Like that's the most evolved, like crazy way to paint black because you're essentially doing sky earth black. Um, and if you want an example of that, look at a black car. Uh, like if you want a real world, since we, most of us don't have, you know, black stormtroopers like, you know, hanging out with us, uh, the, a black car with a shiny finish would be the closest thing to get you uh, where you are on that. And you'd still leave a lot of the surface black. My question is, cause I don't have it right in front of me. I don't have a black car right in front of me. So I can't look and see how much color comes through cause colors. Well, yeah, if you want the total, if you want the cheapo way rocks black with a black gloss or with a gloss sealer. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, yeah, Cosmania. Actually, I like um, nonfiction audiobooks as, lot, as well to paint to. I'm, I really like nonfiction. Fiction audiobooks, for some reason, tend to overwork my brain. Uh, I get really tired after listening to them. So if I'm going to do fiction, I have to read it traditionally. But nonfiction doesn't do that to me for some reason. Maybe it's because it doesn't require as much visualization. So a little bit. Again, I'm shrinking the highlight here to get these out. But now I'm going to actually try to make this shiny. And that's why I'm concentrating my highlights in, in very cylindrical, very vertical ways. Because the light is coming down and this is a curved plate. And that means that the light is going to kind of like fall along a cylinder. So it's going to have a band of light followed by a shadow and then coming back up toward a highlight, which is exactly what I saw when I held it up under my lamp. So we're going to do it that way. We'll block it in and then we'll smooth it out. Yeah, they can add color. It's just Alba, Alba Vazen. The question is how much color? Because if you look at like, say, a red car um, and you look at stuff reflected in it, there's a limit as to how much color gets reflected on that red because it's red. Uh, it's kind of like the same thing of colors look differently under colored light. And some colors, uh, often colors will shift. So if you've got a green, uh, green goblin, for example, if you shine orange torchlight on it, that skin is going to shift toward yellow and green. Or yellow and orange, sorry. It's going to shift away from green and toward the light color. And so that's even a more advanced way to think. You know, that's things to... I should, I should write up a little thing of, of how to start shifting your thinking about lighting. Maybe I'll do that for the Patreon. At which point I will now say, hey guys, I have a Patreon. <laughs> a great intro. Um, I do a lot of advanced, more advanced color stuff on there. I do uh, PDFs about various colors and working with them. Um, and uh, I just did one on, um, oh gosh, what was my one for this month? Oh, saturation. I did one on saturation. Everybody seemed to really like it. Uh, like what saturation is and how you can use it. Because uh, Aaron Lovejoy and I were uh, talking about that a lot on the toolbox stream that he did a couple weeks ago. I guess it's a few weeks ago now. Um, so yeah, uh, it's patreon.com slash painting big. Um, and uh, I just did a PDF on blonde hair for the $2 level also. And we just hit our goal, my, my $1,000 goal. So I'm super excited and psyched. Uh, so yeah, go on over and take a look if you want to. Uh, but of course, I'm here also on Reaper Toolbox. So Also, I'd like to comment that... Uh... Achilles says that uh, they have a son named Ronan. Yeah. I, I think that name is cool as hell. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is a very cool name. There are lots of cool names out there now. Even if all the people who named their daughters Daenerys are now sad, at least there's a bunch of cool Aryas out there. And I actually know somebody whose middle name is Eowyn. Because her parents were huge, uh, huge fantasy fiction geeks. So, and still are. What what's that from again? A Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Duh. Eowyn and Arwen. Right. Yeah. That's fair. I was thinking. Never mind. You were thinking somewhere else. Yeah, I was thinking more obscure. I was I was scouring my brain, but it was right in front of me. Glam, glam, a shutter skull. Yeah, sorry, glam. I didn't see your comment right away because your name is really hard to read in that light green on my tiny computer screen, or the tiny window that I currently have chat on on my computer screen. But at least I have chat up next to my actual camera this time instead of like having to look over here. So that's nice. All yeah, right. Balrog, that's that's an appropriate reaction. I'm I'm uh, a little ashamed that I just completely let that fly over my head. Yeah, I know, Justin. Just uh, you, your geek cred just went I, down. It just don't. I literally I have the One Ring text around my forearm too. Like yeah. Tattoo. Oh man, maybe it's just Monday. Let's just blame it on Monday and not on Justin. Um, I'll you know he really does. So he, he is a Lord of the Rings fan. He's just like, it's Monday. Even I can forget obvious stuff on Mondays. Lately, other days of the week, I've started masquerading as Mondays, which is, which is sad. All right, so we've got kind of our blocked in um, highlights and shadows in there. Um, I need to blend them in a little bit better. So I'll go back to my dark blue and try to blend in this side a little better. Now, the problem is I can't get too... I don't want to impinge on my black too much, so I may need to come in with my black and expand it again, because I still want this surface to look black, but I do want to kind of blend in my highlights a little bit. And uh, it's really important to use kind of a horizontal brush stroke on this. Um, whenever you're doing a vertical line, a vertical highlight, 
like on a cloak, for example, on a fold of a cloak, don't use a vertical brush stroke. It's gonna stick out, like the eye is gonna pick up on it right away and all you're gonna see is your highlighting lines. But if you go sideways to the area, if you go not not doing an up and down stroke or not doing a sideways stroke, on, like I wouldn't do a sideways stroke on this because it's a long sideways area. If you go perpendicular to whatever effect you're trying to do, you can do a side stroke that kind of minimizes and blends in and blurs that line. So then it's harder for the eye to see your brush stroke. So it actually helps you with uh, layering. Let me mix up. I'm going to mix up one more highlight because I want this to actually look shiny. So I'm going to mix up a white with blue, and then I'm going to mix up a pure white. And as I uh, get more white, I am going to get a lot more thin, a lot more water, maybe down to like one to one. You're almost painting with glazes when you're painting with pure white at the end. Uh, it really is just like that. All right, let's get a really pale blue. So I'm going to do two brushfuls of my previous mix. And I do this a lot when I paint at home. This is the way I organically mix is once I have my setup color, which would be like this blue gray here, I'll just transfer some of it with my brush, add white. And then I'll transfer some of that color with my brush, add white, and then so on and so on. So it essentially means that my colors always go together because I've always got a bit of my previous color mixed into my highlight. So that's just a trick for uh, making sure that your highlight colors go together. It can get hard when you're trying to use like different greens to highlight a, another green and you're not sure if they've got the same pigments um, or maybe it ends up looking a little weird. It's probably that. It's probably that they're, they do have different pigments. And so to make different greens like go together, you often want to do a 50-50 mix between them. And the same can be true of blues. If you're working with gray blues and they're a little bit different from each other and you don't have a triad, um, you may need to mix a little bit of the one into the other. And that is a nice trick to make them work together. You can always bridge. You can highlight any color with any other color as long as you do mixes or glazes. But you need to like have them, oh, hey, bug lips. Um, need to have them have something in common pretty much to play well together. So now I've got a really, really light blue. Oh, wow. And I'm just going to kind of bring a little tiny line. That might actually read as white. Um, and I'm going to bring another tiny little line. It's not pure white yet. Down the inside of this, right up against that little lining. Um, so that's really going to start making it look kind of shiny. Let me see if I can thin that. You can see, though, that you can see brush strokes. So you can see how thin. My, my paint is super thin. It's probably one and a half to one paint to water but I need to throw more water in it at this point. I need to probably go to one-to-one. -one. And even though it's gonna look like there's no way you could paint with something that thin, when you try to put a brush stroke down, you're gonna see it. Um, and I mean, if I find that I'm really having trouble blending it, I can take my previous highlight color, kind of paint over it a little bit to blend it in. Just pretty much kind of glazing. It's kind of a spot glaze in a way. Um, I'm gonna try this one more time. Let's see here. Yeah, now that blends in a little bit better. So I've got a, a really straight highlight coming down the side there. And that's starting to look a little bit more like it's shiny because I'm, I'm bringing the highlights up now. So, and they're, and they're sharp. Um, so that's the other thing, right? If you want it to be shiny, you don't want a big diffused white highlight. You want a, a small, sharp white highlight, spot highlights almost. Um, spectral highlight as some people call it on rounded surfaces. So maybe I just want to hit like a tiny, tiny highlight, you know, and maybe I want to pit a tiny highlight like here toward the bottom. And some people will do that. They'll just like put a tiny little spectral highlight to kind of suggest, and this is the kind of catch light that you use on eyes, right? So essentially what I'm doing there is I'm using two dots to kind of emphasize that the light is falling like that. And so it's hitting here and it's hitting here. Um, it wouldn't necessarily hit up the top of here because you've got this big breastplate projecting out. So it's going to shadow that area a bit. Um, but yeah, that, but if you're looking for shiny black, uh, raccoon black and gray, you need to pander more Rex. <laughs> Actually, wolf gray is close to raccoon gray. Hate to say it. You you can take your bottle of wolf gray and relabel it raccoon gray. I give you permission. 
I will not be insulted. And it will still be accurate. You can even like start teaching classes and refer to it as Raccoon Gray, and I still won't be upset. In fact, I'll probably be highly amused. And firmly supportive. There we go. We got to blend in that. That's That highlight got a little bit big. But yeah, so most of the surface remained black, or it remained really close to black. And so as a result, it reads black. Um, it doesn't read black as, as well uh, because of the blue up here and the pure black here, but it still reads enough black. Like it was a dark enough surface to still read black. So I didn't even actually use any pure black on this. Because if you remember, my base coat was that I painted over it with this dark blue. So, but and yet, because we've kept it like really close to black, it still reads black. So that's an example of how you don't have to use pure black to make something look black, especially with blues, I find it's very easy to carry off um, a pure black. Now, if I want to, I can take some pure black and come back and uh, put some shadow in to make it even darker. But pure black is pretty dead visually. Um, it, you know, it really doesn't do anything for anything. It's just black. It kind of disappears. The eye doesn't even want to look at it, really, unless it's very flashy. Um, but I can put it kind of right, right down the middle here. And again, I want to use a sideways brush stroke so that if I do have any brush strokes show, um, they're kind of disguised. And then that will make it even shinier because I brought in this hard shadow. And if I make that hard shadow go really close to my highlight, that will help me to create that shininess, that shiny appearance, like this is shiny black leather plate down here. So let me take my, bring my highlight up a little bit more, right sharp against that, and then you can see that. How gray is the color I'm using? Um, very gray, actually. Let me see if I can get in. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, only a hint of blue because there's so much black in it and there's a fair amount of white in tropical blue. So it ends up, uh, it actually ends up looking a lot like snow shadow and twilight, um, twilight blue, but, and, and even midnight blue, except that there's no violet in these. There's actually a green shift because tropical blue is a warm blue. So you don't get, but you could use the colors and I have recommended midnight, uh, twilight and snow shadow for highlighting black for a long time. But this way, you don't even need those three colors. All you need is tropical blue and black and white. And you'll just get a slightly different blue, slightly warmer blue. So tricks, 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 tricks. Well, let's do, do I have some time? Yeah, I've got a little bit of time. So let's do the red. So I've got my red there. I probably need to mix up a couple more highlights of red. However, do notice that Notice the difference, right? So there's your highlights on cloth. Notice how subtle they are and how much darker they are. And then see how bright you bring it up when you want to do an armor plate in black. So that's the examples. And also you highlight differently, right? You hi highlight in streaks, in lines, like the light is falling. And here you're catching the edges of, of horizontal surfaces because that's where the light would catch. So it's all thinking about light. Start thinking about light. And... Light and textures, how light acts and how, how to bring about textures are two of the advanced, um, more advanced layering practices that can really make your stuff look interesting. Um, and the great thing about um, textures is that when you start introducing them, you don't have to have perfect layering because you actually want brush artifacts to suggest texture. So let's bring this up with red. I'm using heraldic red. I was using about six drops of heraldic red and two drops of pure black. Let's do this next one. Da, da, da. Um, What's the uh, number on Heraldic? 9402. Right there on the screen. Oh, sorry. It wasn't on the screen yet because there's a little bit of a lag. Um, but now I'm going to take two more drops of Heraldic Red and mix a brush full or two of this dark, nice dark red in. Um, and grab some water because I need to thin it to give me a red highlight. I wonder if I could show you guys... Hmm. And it's not really in the scope, but we'll at least highlight this uh, this dark red and make it look black too, just a different kind of black. So let's do that. I may have to do some spot mixing because we don't have a lot of time. So it's Raldic red plus black. Uh, let me look at my highlights. I think I'm just going to make this clothy because it's kind of like hanging down like cloth. So we'll just build up. And reds can be hard. 
uh, when you're trying to bring reds up from a dark base coat because uh, they're a bit translucent when you when you start thinning, thinning them. And that means that you kind of have to build them up a bit so that they until they appear, right? You can underpaint them. If you want them to go bright, you can underpaint them with white. But I don't want this to go bright. I want it to be black. I just want it to be a reddish black. So, and this holds as well if you're trying to do fantasy hair colors. Um, goth, goth girl red, for example. Uh -huh. um, where you want mostly black hair, but just red highlights. So you just want to pretty much bring up the edges. And I probably want to bring the edges up a little bit more, but I don't want to go too much into there because remember, I want this to look black. So just for fun, let's do what we did. Ooh, yay, autumn browns, good. Nice to hear, JJ Trucking. Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of the, obviously I do a lot of the same things, right, Balrog? Because, I mean, I having made the paint line, I don't really care at this point. I can just reach for whatever. I know what's in it. I'll mix what I need. I just needed a red this morning, so I just grabbed the heraldic red because I could use it because any red would work for me. Um, that's how my boyfriend uh, mixes a lot too. He's even he's even more fluid about it than I am. I think he maybe keeps 20 paints out at all times and he doesn't really even look at what he's using. He just is like, I need a yellow grab. Um, I don't know that I'm quite that brave. <laughs> Like, there, I know enough about pigments to, to hesitate here and there because I don't want to have uh, issues because I know some yellows shift orange and some shift green and stuff like that. But uh, in time, you just get a sense for it, I suppose. I'm just trying to put some black in the center here to pull it closer to black. Because remember, if everything is near black or pure black, and then just the edges are highlighted with red, it'll be a black red. So it's all about surface control, which is what I call how much area you you give to highlights, shadows, and midtones. And by midtone, I'm pretty much talking the color you want it to mostly look. Um, there's definitely a thing where, remember the minute you lose it, the minute 50% of this surface isn't like really dark red or black, um, at least 50% of the surface, uh, it's going to start looking like it's red instead of a black red. So keeping like an eye on where your highlights are and how thick they are and how much area they take up, especially for painting red, orange, black, white, gray, very important. Oh, and yellow, if you want a nice yellow and you don't want it to go too orange, kind of have to watch where, how much surface you are impinging upon with your highlights and shadows. Uh, all right, so we're really bringing up the edges now on that, you can see. And then the higher I bring it, with the darker in the middle, mostly, um, actually what you can do with this if you want, is you can kind of gray out the edges or fade them. Like if we wanted to say that this was um, weathered or worn, this is a great way to bring in some, uh, like uh, I like to use driftwood brown or stained ivory, mix it into a bit of the red and you can kind of highlight the bottom edge or just a bit of the edges with that color. It makes it look like the color's faded instead of fresh. So you can also mix gray in, gray works. I find that a gray brown works a little bit better though. Let's just go up to pure heraldic with a little bit of our, our light blue mixed into it actually, because I do want to mute it a little bit. Let's make it a little softer. So, because I don't want the bright, bright red. That's not realistic for cloth, really. Not not medieval cloth, anyway. Um, so I mixed in a little bit of my, this light blue that I was working with in my second to last highlight. I just took a couple of brushfuls of that, mixed it into my heraldic red, uh, just to mute it out. Because any gray would do that. And I don't have driftwood immediately to hand, so I don't have my brown. So we'll just try this and see if it works. Now I need to be careful because this stuff now has white in it and it's probably going to show up a lot more. So I have to really manage where my highlights are and make them very, very small, but I still want them and I can still hit the edges here. If I'm leaving the, uh, the under area there black, then I definitely want to hit these edges so that this cloth stands out and hit the outside edge for the same reason. 
just a little bit. And I don't always use a straight line. Like as you guys probably noticed, I was doing a dabbing notion. I was kind of almost stippling there. And that's fine because it's cloth. There's texture to it. So it doesn't matter. At this scale, you probably wouldn't see much texture. But by using a stippling stroke or something different, you can uh, suggest texture. And then in that case, it works for you to leave a little bit of your, um, your brush strokes, you know, actually visible. You don't have to be perfect, which is always a plus, right? All right, so that's, that's actually looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to grab just a little bit of this, grab a little bit more of my blue-gray. So I have an even lighter kind of faded out color, kind of a faded rose, which is actually a very pretty color. Um, Brazelton, I'd say these are about, oh, let's see, about two to one. Two drops paint, one drop water, I'm going to guess, for most of them. When I was working with these highlights on the black here with the blues, I had to I had to thin it down darn near to one to one. Um, but with these, because I'm not so worried about leaving texture, um, I'm leaving it like more like two to one. It's kind of imprecise because I've been mixing a very thinned paint into a much thicker paint. So I was kind of a guess, but just looking at how it looks on my palette, I'm going to guess about that. And here I'm just going to dot like the very edge. I just want to bring up just a little bit. Bring it where it's where it's kind of coming out away from the body so there would be more highlights and also it would be more weathered i don't want to lose my previous highlight but this lets me if i don't want the red to be so strong if i want it more muted this lets me do it and i can even leave like little nicks if i wanted to i could suggest like a break in the fabric but this is actually there's a little divot up here so i can do that by highlighting it let's see right about there so by just highlighting the bottom edge with this kind of rosy color, I can bring out that divot in the cloth to make it look like a tear, especially if I put a dot of pure black in the middle of it. Boop. If I get a little bit big, that's fine because there's a lot of black in here already. So if there was no other, like if every other surface on this model was lighter than this red, this red would read as black. Absolutely it would. Um, especially if you went in with your black and you made sure that the center part was indeed pure black so that there was a lot of area being taken up by black or near black. And then you just pretty much have, you have a, a black that is weathered slightly red. So it's a very, very dark red black. Um, so that's a great way to do. And then uh, if I want to, I can use a much more vibrant red, right? I can actually bring up other parts of him with heraldic red as a color, um, accent and it will work because that this is so much lighter uh, than that that they'll actually work together because this is so dark there's contrast in the lightness and darkness so you don't have to worry about the rest of it yay so good that looks pretty okay i mean i could even take it up a little higher but it's cloth so i want to keep it a little more dull but yeah so different ways to paint black on a model and if as you can see all of these things look different like from the hood to the plates, to the red down here. It all looks different, but it's all dark. So I could paint this guy in like 100% really dark colors. I could do a red, blue, black um, color scheme and it would work. It would absolutely work. I mean, even better if like some of his armor is like, you know, has silver edging or something. That would be even, even cooler to like really emphasize how dark the rest of him is. Um, let's see. Yeah, you guys aren't too talkative today. You're all like just watching. So everybody's chilling. Everybody's chill on this Monday. I like it. It's good. So all right, any questions? Because I think we're we're getting down to yep, we're getting down to where uh, we need to say bye bye. So you just rolled in, Zujita. You should go and watch it um, once this is up on the the Twitch uh, vod if you want to absorbing the information. Uh, Pendrick, this is 77093. It's Drago Voss, male assassin. Um, I like him a lot. He's a nice menacing little assassin or a rogue figure. And I like his armor. It's just got a lot of different things going on. You could do a lot of things with it. You could paint it. I like to paint it as, as um, leather over steel, um, but, uh, or boiled leather plates. That works too. If you, if you want to be a rogue or assassin, that's probably what he's got. But otherwise, I like I just like the variants of his assassin. I like his pose. I like his detail. I think this is a Bobby Jackson, I think. But uh, yeah, he's a good good model if you need a, a sneaky adversary or a couple of sneaky adversaries uh, for your D&D &D game. Uh, yeah, 
yes, coal black is also cool, and it is a, a dark off black. Coal black is uh, has uh, blue and green in it. So if you highlight it by adding white, you will notice that color shift. So yeah, we have a lot of sneaky blacks like that, guys. All that help with these techniques. So you do not have to just use pure black. And black, pure black is just kind of dead. It just kind of, coal black just sits there. It doesn't do a thing. And it's not very visually interesting. So if you are going to paint a model in blacks, so think about mixing in just a little bit of a different color. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, I like Bobby sculpts. They're so crisp. All right, let me switch back to face cam and hope I deactivated the intro. There we go. Yay, and I did deactivate it so you don't get that blooper. You get every other blooper. <laughs> Deactivating the Toolbox logo, forgetting to plug in my earbuds. You get all those. You don't get the, uh, the final um, intro blooper. So yeah, I hope you guys had fun with this. I actually really like uh, talking about painting black. I think it's, it's an interesting topic. You can go into it a lot. Uh, and there's just a lot of little fine things that you can do to tweak it, make it look really cool. Um, so definitely, you know, and, and when you start to texture it, then it gets very, very interesting. Um, I did a bit of that on a bust for my Patreon not long ago. So let's see, any, uh, any last questions? Looks like, vote for an Anne Mini. Um, Dark Sword keeps wanting to do one. I want to be a Viking shield maiden and I want Kiri as my war dog. Like that would be my Anne Mini. If, if I could have an Anne Mini that I think was me, um, that would be it. Um, Dark Sword just, you know, they, they just haven't, they, they want art before they do anything and we just haven't gotten art done. So I don't know if I'll ever have an Anne Mini, but that would be the Mini I would want. If somebody made an Anne Mini, I would want to be a Viking shield maiden with Kiri as my war dog. Doesn't it? Doesn't it sound cool? Yeah, I'm all up for that. So maybe somebody will eventually do it. All right. I don't see any other questions. Yeah. Yeah. Tune in tomorrow. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Justin, we don't have any other shows on Monday, do we? Uh, we have Josh's show today. Oh, three. right. I forgot. It's Josh's show. Josh is totally going to like go at me. Um, yeah. So there's Josh's show where he um, is painting minis for RPGs and he has, unlike me, he has organized and has figured out all the colors he will use in advance. <laughs> I just like to kind of do off the cuff with you guys because that's the way I paint, right? So uh, it feels natural to me to kind of do it that way. But I know that John gets frustrated because he wants lists of paints and minis. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, tomorrow I might do some terrain. I've got a Bones 5 piece uh, that broke, so I snagged it. Um, and I really kind of want to do, like, show you some painting, stonework, and maybe even do some, like, basing materials and stuff on it to make it dressed up and kind of fun. I don't know. So maybe the next couple days will be, like, some scenic stuff. I'm kind of thinking about that. So, yeah. Let's, let's think about that for, for tomorrow and Wednesday. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Reaper should make, min it, like, yeah, like Ron needs, well, Ron does. Isn't Stern Crest Kestrelman supposed to be Ron? I think Ron already has a mini. I don't know if Ed and Dave do. Um, and Adrian needs a mini. I need a mini. But yeah, is Sadie needs a mini. Yeah, I think you're right. We should all have Reaper adventurers. And then we can make them giveaways on all of our shows. Isn't that a great idea? Listen, Reaper, listen. I'll go in and tell them that. <laughs> Well, yeah, right. Pendrake, yeah, tra craft paints for terrain for sure. But I mean, I can totally talk about colors that I use, not even specific colors for MSP, but in general colors that I would use. Um, and terrain is just gigantic basing. So, I mean, I use the same techniques on tiny bases when I paint them. All right. Sadie is a halfling rogue. <laughs> I'll have to ask her what she is. All right. Ready, Miss Anne? Yeah, I think. We got I a raid for us. <gasps> we have a raid? Sweet. That sounds awesome. Who are we raiding? Miniatures Den. Oh, I don't think I, I don't think I've that we've raided them on my stream before. What do they do? Uh, he does a lot of the. Uh, he actually is going to be a Rubicon this year, but he oh, just good. he does miniature painting. Okay, cool. So, but he does a pretty good job. Good, excellent, fantastic. Well, stick around then and give him some Reaper love, you guys, and keep being awesome, and be sure to tune in for um, Josh's stream at three. Uh, cause that's always fun and entertaining and he has a very different take on things than I do. So yeah, thank you. Thank you all for showing up and we will see you again soon. All right. Got anything to add, Justin? Nope. That's it. Just spread the reaper love and keep being awesome guys. Okay. Fantastic. Have a great day guys. Zan signing off. See ya.